know. Hello. Am I on Bahai Life's IG or am I on my personal one? I feel like I'm on mine. Ah, oh, I'm on mine. I just got I just got my own notification. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, universe. Okay, before we dive into Astro Live, I want you guys to pull up this song, okay? Because you're always asking me what type of music I listen to or what I'm listening to, and I can't predict it because I'm all over the place. But this song was sent to me by one of my best friends a long time ago. We were on a mini road trip. We were going somewhere because that's what you do when you're on a road trip. And she sent it, we were listening to it in the car, and then she texted it to me, and she was like, this is for you. And it's by Third Story, and the song is called um, Grows Old from the album Searching. And this is what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. It might be a little backwards or whatever, but this is what it looks like. So go ahead and download that onto your phones or save it on YouTube or whatever because it's such a good song. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty and I just feel like every single one of you guys needs to listen to it. Okay, that being said, hey everyone, <laughs> welcome for welcome to our Astro Live Chat. Morgs Woodward said, this is my first Astro Live Chat, so welcome. Crown Vibe says, hey Jess, I love the glitter. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This glitter is actually from, and it's from, I forget where it's from, but you can get it at, I think it's NYC, I think it's NYC's brand. Can you guys hear New Orleans in the background? So I, I'm not too far from Jackson Square, I'll say that. So the church bells ring at six o'clock. So it's six o'clock here, seven o'clock in Eastern Standard Time. And then there's a horse and carriage going by. So that's how you know I'm right in the middle of the French Quarter. And not only that, but this is my courtyard. And there's an airplane going. I don't know if you can hear that. NYX, tire 24 is, it knows exactly what I'm trying to say. Let me go ahead and clean that off. That being said, um, I wanted to do tonight's Astro Live chat from the courtyard. Why? Well, because it's 72 or 73 degrees out tonight. And I wanted to, and I just felt like this was a good spot. Number two, the number two reason I was hanging out with Valeria the Mexican Witch this past weekend, one of the days of this past weekend, and she was talking to me about like living here, like what, I, what it felt like, my experience, like being here in the French Quarter, because she's a little outside of the French Quarter, and I don't know if she's tuning in right now. If you are, girl, hey, what's up? And um, she was like, so what about like spirit activity and stuff like that, like my experience here, you know, do, is there a lot of paranormal activity? that I've experienced in the quarter because in the quarter it's highly concentrated activity like there's a lot of spirit um, activity that happens here in paranormal activity and not only that but my apartment and my spot that I stay at is a part of one of the most haunted spots in New Orleans and the the, it's actually on the list for the tour guides to hit. So I feel like you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but I'll like go and take out my trash and then there's like a group that's just standing across the street and they're all just like looking and then the, the door swings open and everyone's like, oh my God. So we have to be really protective of our space because people tend to gravitate to where I live, like where literally where I'm living, but tourists will try to get in. Um, you know, it's just, you know, living in New Orleans, what's that like? But, okay, so the reason why I'm saying this is because the, we, when Valeria and I were talking, I was just like, girl, come over anytime, sit on the balcony, which is where I'm at right now, sit on the balcony and just sit here for five minutes 
with the videos, you know, with your camera recording or your video recording, and you will pick up on spirit activity without a doubt. There have been, and it usually happens around this time, around three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Um, you'll hear banging from that wall right there. And that's that's 100% brick, but it doesn't sound like brick when it's when you hear the banging. It just sounds like like wood or something, and it's not it's not and it's coming from that wall, which is attached to the next spot, which I'm not going to say where I'm at because that's my location, it's my address, and but if I wasn't so public on the internet, you best believe I would tell you where I was where I'm living. Um, but for safety reasons, we cannot do that. And last year, 2018. In the beginning of the year, mid mid of last year, I had to deal with some really crazy stalker stuff. Like, for those of you guys that know, I had to actually go to the police multiple times for it, which was just uh, the fact that I had to do that was crazy. So, that was one of the spot, one of the reasons why I picked this location in New Orleans. And my neighbors were perfect. I set the intention for like 100% security, and we have like 100% maximum protection here. Um, and then of course the place next door has their own security and that just kind of trickles over into ours so we benefit from that and my neighbors look out for each other but the moral of the story is mommy my mommy's here she's at the gym right now working out but the moral of the story is is that that was one of the reasons why I wanted to come out and do our astro live chat here because if you know you're more apt to kind of pick up on spirit activity when the, the sun goes down it just makes it easier for, for you to see it it's not to say that there's any more any less um, activity especially in the quarter it's constantly it's ongoing but you can just see it better when the lights are off so you'll see um, little flicks little orbs they'll come in they'll be curious they'll be like oh hey and then they'll kind of like zip off and do their own thing so that's something to keep in mind that I wanted to share that little aspect of it and it's just beautiful outside so I wanted to be outside okay are you guys ready Car Carmen Atra is saying the same thing I was just about to say. She said, I've missed these Astro Lives. Thank you. No, thank you. It feels so good coming on here and talking to you. Um, again, because we're live, anything can happen. You guys already know that. I protected my account and protected our tribe, and I put in my account, I put my account private to make sure that we were kind of forcing out any type of negativity or people who were just, you know, riffraffs or trying to derail us or whatever. Um, so this is our first time going live with that because I'm outside, you know, you know, helicopters are going to go, you know, lights might start blinking, um, my neighbors might be walking through, the dogs might start barking, so just keep in mind that those are things that I can't control, but it all comes with the territory of A, going live, and B, being in a public spot, public, you know, within the courtyard area. We all share this courtyard, so there might be people coming in and going out. I think my neighbors left, but they might still be here. All right? All right, woo, so that being said, okay, hello, it's 2019. Thank you so much, 2018, but also you gotta go because 2018 whooped the majority of our asses in the way that it whooped our asses into shape is what I'd like to say. I was just talking to someone yesterday right before I went to a drag show and they were just like, I'm gonna hit my Saturn return, like I'm so scared, but I'm like, and they're just like, just talk to me about it. And of course, I wanna talk to them about it because I don't want them to be scared. But basically, like me talking about their Saturn return is really important because it shows the energy of Capricorn, which is what we're dealing with now. And when you enter Capricorn energy and Saturn energy, it requires the most from you. It requires you to be ready, it requires you to be prepared. Someone on my Twitter earlier today tweeted at me and just was like, Jess, you know, I'm having a hard time respecting this need of being quiet and being still when so much of me wants to move forward. Like, I want to go. And you're telling, you're telling us to like be, you know, to, to be reflective, to be, I don't remember exactly what it is that she said. And, and wait, I really want to pull this tweet up because I felt like it was so meaningful. So give me a second. But while I'm doing this, feel free to go ahead and follow me on the Twitter machine you can look up Bahati Life. Of course, it's going to take forever to do it. Okay. Let me scroll through my notifications because there's a lot. Okay. So, Vanessa NLR, four hours ago, says, I thought I was the only one. It's so hard resting during Capricorn season. Feels like I should be doing more, but so little energy. And she hit the nail on the head with that. And my response to it was, Shiza, 
I can't see my response. Pretty much, my response was, you have just because when you're in Capricorn season and when you're working with Capricorn energy, the sign itself, like the sign, represents the energy, and Capricorn always is connected to winter and this time of the season because that's the time of Capricorn. And Capricorn is all about building and structure and stability and hard work. But also Capricorn falls during hibernation. Capricorn falls during this quiet, still, um, still period. And it's a, a testament to how nature understands how even this constructive rest period is one of the best things that you can do for yourself just as much as it is those times where you're actively, you know, putting something together or knocking things together or setting intention or going out and making moves. The other thing is that Mars ruling action, ruling our drive, ruling our ambition is moving through the sign of Aries. And Aries is the first sign of the zodiac that says to go out to seek to conquer to accomplish to achieve we don't know what's going to happen we just know that we need to do and mars is all about action so it also wants to do but if you look at the chart the majority of the planets are sitting well outside of venus the majority of the planets are sitting in earth and want you to materialize and also need you to be still and need you to preserve why is that well, because when you're when you think of um, when you think of the animals and nature, it has to reserve its energy. It has to take what it has here right now, and work with only that in order to survive, in order to thrive. And if it keeps doing, 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 and exerting itself, by the time spring hits, it's going to be wiped out. It's going to be drained. It didn't take that rest period. And the same thing happens for us. And it's so interesting. Because today, while I was sitting in my meditation, now, last night, I don't know what, well, I know what was going on, but Uranus yesterday went direct. Uranus is a planet of erratic change, total unpredictable energy, and people were not talking about it. Everyone screams about Mercury retrograde, but no one screams when Pluto goes direct, Saturn goes direct, Uranus goes direct, or goes retrograde. Any one of those planets goes retrograde. But they have such a huge influence on us. In fact, you know, this is now the time when we're going to probably start seeing the most explosive changes in our environment, in our world. But no one's going to talk about that. But everyone will talk about Mercury retrograde. It's so irritating. But so we're starting to see this huge shift that's happening. And Mars rules our action, rules our drive and our ambition is moving through the first sign of the zodiac. And Aries energy is like, I need to push out into the unknown. There's something out there that I need to experience, that I need to do. And then yesterday was the Capricorn new moon. And it wasn't just a normal new moon, it was an eclipse. So that means that something huge, honestly, this is more than just a regular new moon. This is a new moon times three. And then next, next full moon, we're going to have a full eclipse. And that's when we're really going to start to see the things that are happening around this time really starting to re reveal themselves during the eclipse. So what's, what we have here is a shifting within ourselves. We're feeling the pull from within. We're, we're, we're feeling conflicting emotions. We're getting pulled in different directions. Um, our minds are getting pulled in different spaces. When we have um, Capricorn, when we have the sun moving through the sign of Capricorn, it's, Capricorn is not known for feeling and emotion. In fact, it's known for not having that. <laughs> it's known for being, can you guys hear the horses going by? There's another um, horse and carriage going by. But um, it's actually known for being almost quite emotionally stoic. But the polar opposite of that is Cancer. And Cancer is known for being the most emotional. It's, being, it's the most emotional sign. But just because when you have this eclipse happening in the sign of in the, in the sign of Capricorn, even though and it's not a full moon, full moons will heighten your emotions too. So no one talks about the feelings that get stirred during that eclipse because everyone understands Capricorn to be stoic, emotionally stoic. So when you start having these feelings kind of bubbling up, or you start getting triggered, 
or you start reacting, emotionally reacting to the things that are happening to your environment, you yourself could actually feel like you are disconnected, that you're not in tune or that you're doing something wrong, when in reality, you're working with the energy of the planets and you're working with what's going on around you. So um, what, I, what I was saying in my video that I just posted up um, today for Astro uh, Week Ahead, but most of it was intuitive because I just felt like I should focus on that is that um, you know we're all under the same influence and we're all be asking ourselves the same question what is it that I want to commit myself to what is it that I want to dedicate myself to and you know that means that we have to look towards the future we have to look forward in the future and ask ourselves what that looks like what does that ultimate picture look like and what's scary about that is that what you may picture and what you may visualize for yourself or what you're intuitively picking up on these like signals this like sonar that you might be picking up on may be worlds apart from what it is that you are accustomed to what it is that you've learned what it is that you're comfortable with and a lot of you a lot of us are entering into territory that is so unknown and so foreign to us but and like what what that feels like like think about that like if you're like even if you're starting something and you know like okay this is something that I want with a career I know I want to make this move I know I want to go on this trip and there's a part of you that could be excited but there's a part of you that could really be struggling with it but it's like still pulling you you have to commit yourself to it but that feeling is still there so that's ultimately what it is that I'm seeing here within the chart this week um, that people aren't talking about um, Uranus you know, moving direct in the sign of Aries just yesterday. It's, it's one of those like flipping a coin. It, it impacts us each differently. It all depends on your needle chart, but it also depends on what's going on around you and how things have been feeling around you. But more than that, it's to taking a total clean break. And if it's not a total clean, clean break from something that you originally committed yourself to, it's entering into this unknown, unknowingness this new life, this new adventure, this movement forward. Now that being said, um, I pulled some cards this morning and I really sat with them because I was just like, geez Louise, like it just really made a lot of sense to me and it also was so interesting because it applied to some messages that I've been receiving here for myself here in New Orleans. And it's about this like being at the crossroads and being at this point in your life where you really ultimately have to kind of make a decision and the thing is, is that your decision that you make, it's the ultimate commitment, whether you want to call it that or not. Because when you decide, am I going to walk down this road or am I going to walk down this road, that's you committing to it because you really can't turn back and be like, I want to go back in time to this moment when I was asked to make this decision. So that's why, like, another thing too, like, the energy of the Empress is so strong for all of 2019. You're going to hear me mentioning it again and again and again. And you're also, just go ahead and prepare yourself to watch me explore the energy of the Empress within my own life because, and sharing that with you guys because I'm respecting what the cosmos have for us. I'm respecting the charts. I'm res respecting the energy. And I post it on my Instagram, I post it on my YouTube channel, and we're going to be really diving into this energy of Empress, Empress vibes, whether you're a, a male, whether you're a feminine female, whether you're a masculine female, or whether you're a feminine male or a masculine male, we're going to be diving into it. And it's really important right now, you guys, and I said this, I, I feel like not to like make myself you know that voice or be like I'm different than anybody else but I watch what goes on on Instagram and I watch what gets put out there because I'm a part of that community but the new moon is really about being quiet and going into a space of prayer and going into a space of uh, almost disconnect so that you can reconnect within you and that's a part of Empress energy because you're not doing you're receiving you're receiving divine guidance you're receiving clarity you're receiving a message you're receiving peace you're receiving um, quiet so that you can come to the best conclusion for yourself for your future and anything else that is that you're responsible for 
So the new moon, when the new moon happens, the internet is going to tell you to plant those seeds and to go, 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 go. This is 2019. Go after your goals. Go after your dreams. Go after this. Do this, do this, do this, do this. You have to do all these fucking things. But reality is that these people, they may not know exactly what it is that they're saying because the energy of the charts is, if you're, it, it's almost like being in a position of receiving or if you're going to do, do with intention and do it deliberate. But it almost seems like the internet right now is like, react, 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 go, 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 go. This is your goal, this is what you want. Set intention, do this, do this, do this. When in reality, again, go back to the chart, look at the chart. Look at this year. What does this year look like? What is this year being painted as? And it's not you reacting based upon impulse or you reacting on emotion alone or you reacting solely on logic or what everyone's saying, or you knowing this is what's happening for you, you can receive this sign within you that triggers that this is the next thing that I need to do. This is what the next phase of my life looks like. This is what I want for myself. And then you start reacting and you just jump on every single opportunity. And you're like this cat, just pouncing, 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 pouncing. You guys are going to miss the mark. You'll miss the mark because everything is telling you to react, to react, to react. It's like you're grabbing at anything that comes in your direction. Versus Empress Energy knows to sit back, it knows to stay grounded, and it knows the right moment. That's when you do, is when what is coming towards you resonates with you, when it fits your ultimate goal, when it fits your plan, when it intuitively feels right, when it physically feels right, all of those things make sense. Nothing is rushing you to that decision. Nothing is rushing you to um, a decision or a conclusion or an end result. It comes from this inner knowingness within that is probably outside of your comfort zone. Because <sighs> so many of you guys kind of like, you know, I've been, I don't know if it's you guys, but I've been seeing around me, I've been hearing a lot of people like moving from the space of fourth, like root chakra, like they're moving on survival. And the internet right now is encouraging you to react upon your survival. But that's just like base level. Like it really is base level. You don't want to base your decisions based upon like fear or insecurity or self-doubt or if I don't act on this, this is I'm going to miss this forever. This is Empress Energy. You have to ask yourself, do I deserve? And if I do deserve the best, last thing I want to do is settle for less or jump on something like I'm some animal and not be prepared, not be ready. That's what Capricorn energy is asking you guys to do, is to be ready, to be prepared, and to not exert yourself, to not waste your resources. Because Capricorn understands what it means to have nothing, but to have everything at the same time. Because Capricorn energy knows, Capricorn is the, the time of the year when there is nothing. Everything is dead, everything is dormant. You could call out and no one's out there because it's too cold. Everyone's in hibernation. And if you didn't take all of the year to prepare for this now, then you'll have you'll you'll you won't survive, you won't make it. Now, back to the cards that it was. Give me some hearts up if this makes sense for you guys. Because I don't want to like go off on a tangent. And then okay. Wisp Wisp Dreamer says yes, yes, yes. The Red Witch says when you have nothing but everything. Girl, reading that again just gave me chills. I'm not even kidding. Right here. I know I just said it, but sometimes I don't hear myself when I talk. Gemma Crane says, yes. Okay, good. The Michelle Grace says, it makes sense. A girl from the X says, I said last year there, I want to work on my root chakra to deal with lack mentality. <laughs> Honestly, people don't even realize that they're, like, they, they're the most powerful people in the world. They could be so powerful. They could be so woke. They could be working on their power every single day. And so intuitive. But the decisions that they make are only and exclusively from this, menta this mentality of lack, from this mentality of less. And they just wonder why they're not getting ahead, why they're staying in this space of they're just not thriving, or they're depressed, or they're lost. And they know they have all this power within them. All of the universe is telling them and sending them signals that says, look, you can do this, this is your potential. And they hear that, they see that, and all they wanna do is do. All they want to do is react, but when they do react, and when they do do the do, <laughs> it comes from this root chakra, this survival mode. And what do they get? They get nothing in return.
But 2019 is the year, uh, well, what, what do they get? They get less than what it is that they deserve. They're always settling for scraps. They get relationships that drain them. They get depressed. They get worn out. They get exhausted. So they hit brick wall after brick wall after brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. 2019 is actually the year of the Empress and also the Hanged Man, which is doing nothing and doing everything at the same fucking time. And all of that means that you have to rely on your faith alone. That's it. That's all you have. That's all you have is your faith and your connection to the divine and this vision that you have for yourself. And then that is, but that's all you need in order to make insane things happen. The crazy thing is, is that this, just like how you work with any of the other planets, like with Jupiter, you, everyone thinks like, oh, Jupiter is a planet of good, so we're only going to receive abundance. But there's shadow sides to everything. There's shadow sides to everything, which means that, you know, you could receive a lot of abundance and material reward, but you could also receive a lot of bills. You could receive, you know, um, a lot of, you know, spending. So you could be receiving a lot of money, but you could... Uh, be spending a lot of it too because it r rules expansion. I was talking about this in Wendy Williams chart that I did on um, on YouTube, which I got some shit for that. But if you watch my video, you'll you'll see like that message is so powerful. Like I'm not dogging or dragging Wendy Williams. I love Wendy Williams, but I was sharing it, sharing this message with her because I could see how much she's struggling right now, and I wanted to share like maybe it will get to her, maybe it will help her. But the, she's a perfect example of Jupiter moving through the tenth house. And that, uh, an astrologer who doesn't know what they're talking about or an intuitive that is a beginner at it and doesn't know what they're talking about or is listening to these like random ass blogs that are just vomiting up this like misinformation, they'll say, well, Jupiter's moving through your 10th house. So you should have all this career growth. You should have all this career expansion. But if you look at her chart, you can see that, yeah, Jupiter's moving through her 10th house, but Jupiter is also squaring, I think if I remember correctly, her Saturn and her, her Uranus, which falls within the seventh house of relationships. So it's like growth, but at what cost? Like it's like so detrimental. It's not positive growth. It doesn't feel good. Everyone looks at Jupiter and they say, oh, it's so positive. It's so good. It's so abundant giving. So I'm going to get the best. I can't tell you how many times people go, how many times I've seen people go through a Jupiter transit and then also simultane expecting the best, but simultaneously receiving depression, anxiety, heightened you know, whatever issues, but it depends on your natal chart. And it also depends on what Jupiter rules within that, um, what it's aspecting within their chart. So the same thing is true with the hanged man is that you can be in this position and hear me say to you guys, like release, release and allow yourself to kind of be guided, allow yourself to, 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 you know, move on faith, allow yourself to see things from a different perspective and allow yourself to see through a different set of eyes, the eyes of the divine. So I could say that, but at the same time, I'm not going to neglect and tell you guys that there's also this, like, you know, feeling of I'm powerless. And the reality is that you're a human being. The reality is, is that you're a human being. So as a spirit, the spirit side of you can understand that, you know, you relinquishing your, your control, you relinquishing your power is actually you stepping into your power. But the human side of you, which is very much real and very much there, is reacting to that. That side of you is still being triggered because again, like you could have issues with letting go of that, that fear, like the letting go means that, you know, you really are in the eye, you're in the hands of the unknown. You're in the hands of the divine. Do you trust what's going to happen to you? That's like me standing on this balcony right here, just standing on it and be like, look guys, <laughs> I believe in the cosmos and I believe in the universe. So I'm gonna stand here on this ledge and I'm gonna fall back and I'm gonna wait for the universe to catch me. Now, realistically, would I do that? Of course, no, fuck no. That's a drop, that's a long drop. I would drop. <laughs> Is, would there be an angel to catch me? I don't know, <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it. This is probably the best metaphor and the worst metaphor at the same time. But if we're talking about in our lives, you know what I mean? Just that, that, that when it comes to decision making, if when you're standing on that ledge, that's when it's okay for you to kind of like let go and drop. But the reality is, is that if you're guided to do that, of course, everything within you is going to be like, bitch, what? You're going to let go and you're going to fall back and hope that the universe is going to catch you. It will. 
I mean, I'm not going to stand on this ledge right now. That would be stupid. But in your own life, when it comes to, you know, this hope, this dream, that you will actually be caught on. When you move from a space where you're working with divine timing, you're working with your intuition, you're waiting for the signs and the signals versus just jumping and leaping. And that's too much. That's too much. At the same token, um, relinquishing your power, relinquishing your power for hanged man energy means that for some of you guys, you're going to be triggered into you know, woe is me, I'm a victim. And those are natural reactions, meaning like, you know, there's gonna be moments where you're gonna feel like nothing is happening and nothing is occurring, when in reality, everything could be happening and everything can occur, but it's just not gonna happen in your timing in the way that you would expect it in order for you to get confirmation that this is right. Do you know what I mean? How many times have you guys taken a leap of faith or you one day you set intention and you get this signal within you like, yes, what I'm setting intention for is going to happen. It's going to manifest. I feel it within my soul and my spirit. And then like two or three days later, that feeling starts to dive down. It starts to go away because you're like, wait, send me confirmation again. Send me confirmation again. Send me a signal and a sign. Like I had it three days ago when I set my intention and now I'm starting to lose my faith. I'm starting to lose my hope. Send me a sign again. And it's just like quiet. It's because, and then you're like, woe is me, this is never going to happen, this is never going to happen, I'm weak, I'm powerless, I'm alone, I'm isolated. When in reality, that's the moment when you need to rely on your faith, that's the moment when you need to rely on your ability to attract, instead of you doing more, just sit back and receive. All right? <sighs> um, speaking of human, you know, you're under the same influence as all of us. And Mars is moving through the sign of Aries. Mars is all about do, 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 do. Aries wants to go. Aries is fire ignited. So we're all feeling that. As a human being, you are going to feel this spark. You're going to want to get out. You're going to want to explore. Venus is moving through the sign of Sagittarius, so she really wants to get out. She wants to you know, try different things. Um, her values are changing. Um, what she wants is changing. So what she'll attract is changing. It's going to be different. So meanwhile, the rest of the cosmos, the rest of the stars are telling you to reserve, to reserve, to reserve. But they're not saying to not do. It's just that when you are guided to do, make sure that all of this energy is focused into the right thing and that you're not scattering it because that's what Mars and Aries will make you do. And the thing is, is that when Mars moves through Aries, just there's two sides to everything. So just like you can accomplish and achieve the most, only when it's funneled, only when it's when the intention and that energy is directed to the right thing. If you don't have that, Mars moving through Aries is also on the shadow side. It's accidents. It's things breaking down. It's um, you know impulse um, attack. And that's because that energy is scattered and it's not focused on, you know, a constructive thing. That's when we get this impulsive, you know, spontaneous accidents. Like, what the hell were you doing climbing on the roof? Why would you do that? It's like, well, I was bored. Well, I wanted adventure. I wanted, okay. But the roof, though? Why were you climbing on the roof? Now your legs are broken. Or you wanted to go, you were bored one night, so you went out with your friends and you went drag racing in the streets of Philadelphia, which I may or may not have done when I was <laughs> 21. <laughs> I was dating this kid who was really big into drag. I, my mom's watching this right now. Sorry, mom, I'm about to tell you the truth. But when I was 21, um, I was dating this kid who was really big into drag racing and really big into like thrill seeking and. I watched him one day and we would like in Philly like the drag races like they go off in one street and the police will chase you so that everybody has to like on their walkie talkies they'll say okay we're gonna go to this street so everyone like gets in their cars their Hondas or whatever <laughs> and then zips off to that corner meanwhile the police are trying to find you and then you drag race the police find where you're at and then you have to get on your walkie talkie jump on the next thing get in the car and go off to the next location and this kid his name is Greg um, he was always the person to like make them go or he would be the time the one to like do something like really impulsive and to call the shots on And that's who I was dating like who the fuck was I like what was I doing me as a little Virgo like me as a cute little Virgo Just being like just 
in the wrong crowd, but protected by the universe and protected by the angels. Thank God. But I watched him get hit by cars. There was one time um, we were on the highway, and they were drag racing on the highway. I'm not kidding. I do not recommend this for any one of you guys that are 21. Don't do this. This is not, you know, this is obviously not the smart, the wise decision. But he, Greg said, and I think he was Aries too, but he was like, he was like, I'm going to jump. We're on the highway speeding. And he was like, We're, I'm going to jump from this car into the next car. Open the window. <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? But do it. No, I'm just kidding. But um, anyways, the point of me, thank God he didn't do it. He probably would have died. But thank God he didn't do it. But the moral of the story is, is that Greg was seeking adventure. He was seeking thrill. He was seeking, like, life. He was seeking... Um, an opportunity. He needed, you know, excitement. But Greg is an example of Mars moving through Aries, which will get you messed up. All right? But if Greg had the right people investing in him and the right people around him, probably myself included, telling him, like, Greg, take that energy and focus it on building a business or focus it on doing this. Ashley, Ashley Banks said, did he die? He did not die. Last time I checked on Facebook, um, Greg is actually married with children now, and I feel like he's much calmer now than he was. Definitely a thousand times calmer now than he was then. Um, thank God for that. And he's like the chillest kid ever. So shout out to Greg. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for using your life as a, for letting me use your life as an example. Um, but again, that's the energy that we're dealing with. Is this like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to do, I want to, you know, you know, I feel all this within me, but we want to make sure that we're taking all of that and we're funneling it into something that's not going to kill us, that we're not going to regret, that we're not going to like steer off topic or, or get in an accident or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Donut Bay said, aw, yay, Greg. <laughs> yay, Greg didn't die. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, but that being said, it really goes back to, on a serious note, right? Um, there's two sides to everything. Again, make sure that when you're reading these blogs and this information that you're getting it from a good source, that you're checking your sources, and that they're mentioning everything. They're not only mentioning the positive sides, because only mentioning the positive or only mentioning the negative is only going to get you fucked all the way up. Because there's bits of information, not bits, but chunks of information that it is that you guys are missing. And everything needs to be taken into consideration before you make moves, and I as a Virgo, I know that. Um, so back to the cards that came up. Um, Carol... Saldana says, hey, Jess. Hey, girl. And someone said, Curly Ken says, I feel attacked. <laughs> good. That means I, I'm hitting that spot. That means this message is hitting you in a good spot. <laughs> All right. So the cards that came up today and for this week are the lover's card and the chariot. And the thing is with these cards is that what I really want you guys to see is that this is connected to polarities. These are two opposites. These are two different extremes. And the lover's card is one of the first times when we really see that energy kind of heightened solo dolo. Like that's the like that's like the epitome of the lover's card is these extremes, these total extremes. You know what you guys, shout out to me real quick. Because we're at 400 people tuning in right now live. And I, re I was guided during the, 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 I think it was a full moon in my 12th house. Full moon in Cancer. But it happened to fall in my 12th house. And I was guided to put my account on private. And it sounded so counterintuitive to me helping everyone. I'm like, if I have messages that I want to share with the world, why, that I want to help people of the world, my motto of Baha'i life is in service to others and the divine. If that's truly the case, why would I make myself private? And it has been the biggest blessing because it's totally canceled out all of the chaos, all of this madness, and we have more people who are able to concentrate. So shout out to me for listening to my intuition and my guidance, even though it was really scary for me to do that. And I'm just like, oh, this is going to be the death of my account. Watch. I'm going to put my account on private, and literally with all the algorithms, it's just going to be like fall apart. But this has actually been the best decision I've ever made. So just, yes. 
Samantha Deer says, I'm so glad you went private. Yes, me too. Yeah, yeah. I've just been, like, watching, too, like, who's coming in and watching also. Like, you benefit more when you, you know, are not access. You don't have access to everyone. And I feel like this is the most we've gotten live consistently because whatever. Back to the cards. Um, and shout out to my angels and my guides for guiding me. And shout out to me for trusting them. So back to me again. Shout out to me for trusting them. But also, shout out to them for always guiding me so that I know that I can trust them. Even though sometimes in my, my brain, my logical brain, it doesn't make sense. But in my intuitive self, my spirit self, I know to step out on faith. But shout out to me also for feeling that fear and doing it anyways. <laughs> can I give myself some props? <laughs> anyways. <clears throat> so... Back to these extremes, the lover's card is again the first time when we see, and in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, we, we talked about the lover's card in depth, hard depth. And that was the purpose, that is the purpose of the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which by the way you guys, we're gonna be going live soon. I hope you, for those of you guys who are part of the Sacred Circle, our group is about to get lit. So I hope you're ready for that. Um, I did say that I was going to send out an email on Friday, but I got distracted. It's just sitting there. I haven't sent it out, but I will. I'm just perfecting it. You know, I'm a Virgo. Um, but anyways, back to everyone else. So within the lover's card, without going too deep, but if you do want to study the tarot with me exclusively, exclusively, you can do that in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which the details for that are on my website. But this is the first time within the entire major arcana when we're seeing these two opposing energies they're so opposite in fact the next card to follow that is um so it's the lovers first the lovers card first and then the chariot but the chariot also is like a nod to the energy of the lovers because we're dealing with those polar opposites and i'm not going to dive into the meaning of these cards because again i do that within the sacred circle tarot school and we don't have enough time to talk about that today but when you see the lovers card this is masculine energy here, even though it's a man, you have to remember that the cards work with symbolism and they're meant to trigger. They're meant to trigger your intuitive knowledge. They're meant to trigger your, this inner knowingness within you. So masculine energy is represented by the man, the male, and feminine energy is represented by the female. And masculine is pulled by its logic. It's pulled by its common sense. It's also pulled by attraction. It's pulled by desire. That's why he is looking at her and he probably realizes that she is naked and he likes the way she looks and that's what is drawing him to her and that's okay because that's human that's flesh now she is looking at the divine she's looking at Archangel Gabriel she's looking at this heightened sense of you know there's something bigger than me out there this is my intuition this is my feeling this is my emotion and I'm gonna look for that direction. I'm gonna look for that guidance. So there are two, they're balanced. The two of them are balanced because they represent the, 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 the different aspects. They represent um, masculine energy, which is all about do, and they represent feminine, which is all about receive. And then connecting those two together is the angel of God coming up and saying, okay, now you're at the crossroad point. Now that you have these aspects of yourself, you need to make a decision. That's the major message of the lover's card is that you want to fall in alignment, in unity, and choose the right thing from a space of your heart, from intuition, from logic, from your goals. All of these things, all of these factors need to come together with perfect balance so that you can make the right decision for you. And that's why we're at this crossroads right now. Then we have the chariot card, which then is these two opposing polar opposites. You have white here, you have black here, you have light, you have shadow, you have positive, you have negative, you have masculine, you have feminine, and you have do, you have receive. And all of these energies, when they are merged together constructively, when all of those aspects come together without judgment, that's when you have movement, but only when it comes with purpose, with intention, that's and with direction. If these two are, if these two lose control, if this person mentally, emotionally, spiritually loses control of these polar opposing opposites, everything gets derailed and there's going to be a crash. 
Doesn't that sound my, like Mars moving to the sign of Aries? Because that's exactly what it is. It's about, and doesn't that sound like um, the sun moving to the sign of Capricorn? Which is picking and choosing and knowing when to do, when to move, but only with intention, only with direction. Now, you guys are hearing that and you're probably feeling empowered, which I hope. But the reality is, is that you are, at the end of the day, you're not spiritual. I mean, you are a spiritual person, but you're here spirit in the flesh. And we can't not see that. We can't not recognize that. Because that means that you still, as a human, you have human things going on within you. Even though right now you might feel empowered, as you move forward in this week, there's going to be moments where those human aspects of yourself, your insecurity, um, your reaction, your desire, your impulses, your fear, those things, your emotion, I said that already, <laughs> imbalance, it's going to happen. This card shows you that the, the potential for imbalance is there, which means that you have to intentionally create balance because you are only, at the end of the day, you're only a human. Okay? So when you see the lover's card, I want you to see that the people here that are making the decision they are human they're not spiritual they're not represented by spiritual beings even though there's spirit within them they're human just like you so there are going to be moments where you really need to go into this um, energy again and to connect again with the energy of the empress which means that i do not settle for less than what it is i deserve i don't jump on things even though my human being reaction is to impulsively react. My Sometimes it could be our weaknesses. Sometimes we are so controlled of our decisions because again, this is masculine and feminine. Sometimes we're pulled so much by our emotion. Sometimes we're pulled so much by our feeling, our need to do, to do, to fix, to nurture. That's very feminine, but it has to come with balance. On the polar opposite side of that, we have masculine, which wants to do in a different way. It wants to think about things in a common sense way. It, thinks, it wants to process things. It wants to logic, make things logically, makes decisions logically. It wants to react, react in order to do, but there needs to be a balance of those things in order for you to make the right decision for yourself, at least for right now, until this energy changes. And I'll let you know when that happens because we're gonna go live next week on Monday, we're gonna go live next week on that Monday, and we're gonna keep on going live because I'm here for you guys, and that's my job. Yeah, I'm reading you guys' comments, and I fucking love them. Thank you so much. I'm just, again, let me just take a moment and just receive, like, this, because I'm so grateful for this, what we have, what we're doing, where we're doing it, how we're doing it. Um, even in my own life, I'm like, I want to like get everything going. I want to do the shop again. I want to create. That's my feminine matching with my masculine. I want to create. I want to be of service to you guys. I want to make bottles. I want to make intention oils. Um, and that's my action and also me wanting to serve you guys, my feminine. But the universe, again, is like so many things are like in flux. And the time when I've been wanting to do the most is the time when the cosmos, the universe is saying, you need to float. All of the last two and a half weeks of 2018, the universe was saying, lift your feet up and float. Do not do more than what it is that you're already doing. If anything, you need to detox, you need to release. And everything within me wanted to go. Everything within me wants to open the shop up because everyone's asking me, Jess, when is this going to win, 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 win? And it's like, at the end of the day, I have to respect the divine, I have to respect the cosmos. If I'm telling you guys to do this in your life and I'm not doing it, you're not gonna witness me, you know, end up in like destruction. Then you'll be like, this girl, you know, what type of magic is she doing there? What type of intentions is she setting? What type of life does she live? That's not how I live my life. I follow what the, the, the charts are showing and I move when they tell me to move. And the times when I don't move is the times when I fail in a way that I, I shouldn't have to. And I just gave up on that years ago. I stopped you know, trying to figure things out all on my own from a human perspective. And I started following my intuition and merging the two of them together, which is what I'm saying now. And like, I don't wanna say that I've been unstoppable, but like, you know, we haven't stopped moving. Like we haven't stopped progressing. We haven't stopped doing the best. We haven't stopped receiving the best. 
And if I can do that, and if my life can look like that, and you know, even though I have my frustrations, because again, I am still these two little people down here. You know what I mean? I'm human. So when you guys see this and you're a woman, don't look and be like, oh, this is me right here and this is my partner. Maybe, but also look at these two sides of you within yourself, those con conflicting feelings of you within yourself. Because that's what it is that it's talking about. The tarot is talking in metaphor and sometimes our brains are so like specific. We don't even realize how much our brains are like, this is what I see and I only see this. Like we don't even realize it. So again, it's like these polar polarizing energies within us, in our relationships, around us, because that's the, that's like the, that's the vibe of the universe. That's the energy of the universe. Everything is literally the same. And that's why you have to be what it is that you wish to attract. That's why if you're saying you want this, you have to be this. If you want love, you have to be love. If you want health, you have to be health. If you want happy, you have to be happy. Like you have to, you know, all of these things, like they don't just, you know, magnetize. Like they're all, well, they do, but like, it's like a balance, like the balance of dark and light, shadow and, you know, the, the lighter sides of that. <laughs> positive and negative. If I'm talking about there's positive and negative, like, you know, this relationship, there's positive and negative within me. There's positive and negative in my living environment. There's positive and negative in my career. There's positive and negative in my intention. There's positive and negative in the chart. There's positive and negative in the planets. They're all the same. Nothing is not the same. They're all the same. It's all the same shit, just recycled or in a different form, but it's the same form, if that makes any sense. So that's why I'm saying, you guys, too, like we are really truly at this like crossroads where where we're standing right now it breaks off into two spots and it makes sense too because yesterday was the solar eclipse and you know the, the eclipse focused on you know what are you committed to what are you dedicated to where's franklin did he leave oh i'm sorry i had an add moment there i miss him like we just spend a lot of our time together and like if he's not around i'm like where are you bud can you guys hear that? That's the steamboat. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we're at this crossroads. We're at this point where we're going to decide. And when you make that decision, you need to make sure that this is what you want. And that's the thing, too, about the lover's card is that I don't want to negate the fact that this card is connected to union and two things choosing each other. And, you know unity like falling in love and having this like I I desire you I am attracted to you I choose you because it's like if you choose me then that means you can't choose Rebecca Jennifer Lakeisha Joanne Tanya you choose me because I'm the one that you love I'm the one that you want and even if that makes you fearful you still are dedicated to it. You're still committed to it. You're just, you, and you can't choose one or the other. You can't be like, just I love you or I like you, but I also like this, 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 this. You have to choose one. The same thing happens with your career. If you decide that you are going to um, invest in yourself and invest in your future, or you're gonna you know, um, commit to getting promoted, that means that you can't also simultaneously be doing this over here, working at McDonald's, working at TJ Maxx, working at Marshalls, working at Target, um, you know, being of service to your great aunt who pays you $9 an hour. You have to commit to it. You can't carry everything with you because something, it's just not possible. It doesn't happen that way. You can't say, I'm gonna be the healthiest version of myself, but I'm also going to eat cake until I throw up. <laughs> I'm going to smoke cigarettes um, as often as I want. I'm going to not exercise. I'm going to um, jump from one car to the next car on the highway when Jess was 21, but that wasn't me, that was someone else. I can't carry on these negative thoughts and this, you know, stay in the same space where my Instagram is promoting these thoughts, these vision, these visions that trigger insecure feelings within myself or body dysmorphia. 
You choose health or you choose no health. You don't get both, all right? If you're making an unhealthy decision, it's not maybe healthy, it's fucking unhealthy. That's what you chose. You don't get to carry all of this with you. You choose one and you commit to it. And you build on it because it's worth it. Anything else is a distraction and not worth your time. And that's what you decided. Do you have to step into the unknown with that? Does that require commitment? Does that require dedication and hard work? Probably if it's worth it. But do you want it bad enough? And if it is something that you want bad enough and that's something that your heart and mind choose and spirit choose and you get the divine, the message from the divine and you see the signs and the signs support you and the angels support you and the guides support you, then that's what you need to commit to. And you don't get days where you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. No, you fucking do it. Because you said you were going to do it. You're doing it for yourself and you're doing it for something bigger than you. So do it. That's when you channel that energy into it versus you funneling yourself in all these extra directions. Virgo vibes. There's something else that I wanted to... Oh, S. Tabitha says, you sound like Saturn, Jess. Girl, you already know. You want to know why? Because Saturn has always been my, my mentor, my guide. Everyone dogs Saturn, and I'm just like, whatever, y'all. I'm, I'm under Saturn's wing right now, learning all that I can in the amount that I can because it's giving me all of its attention. And you know what attention from Saturn looks like? It looks like it's smacking you in the face and grabbing you by the face and being like, look here, examine here, study this, do this. And you're like, okay. That's what Saturn does. Like everybody hates Saturn, everybody hates Pluto. But I invite all of that energy in because I, as a witch, and me working my magic, and we, me working my intention, and me as an astrologer, and me as a spiritual being, understands that everything has, that I accept the shadow and I accept the light because all of it is teaching me how to work as a human being to connect with the divine, to manifest and make this life just beyond the beyond because this life is bigger than me I have a purpose for being here and the way to like discover that is by looking at the astrology chart but also respecting what it is that they're saying it's like asking God for advice for what you should do next and then receiving it and then like being like nah I'm gonna do it my way okay well your way sucks okay and your way is only gonna get you to level three and once you get to level three, you're not even going to be happy there. And the divine's way could get you to level 11, 12, 13, 14. And it's above and beyond your greatest desires. There will come a point in your life, if you haven't reached it already, where you are going to cry almost every day because the level of gratitude and love that you experience is bigger than you. Like even saying thank you is not going to feel enough for all of the blessing that comes in. And like last night, like for example, like that's, that's where I've been. Like I don't cry, you know, there are moments where I'm frustrated, but there, there are moments where the every, like when I set intention in 2017, which I did talk about it, I don't know where, but I think I put it in a video that I didn't post yet. I might've talked about it. Um, I have two more minutes, but left, but there, there is a moment where like, you know, there 2018, like I would just be hit with this realization that I'm like, oh my God, this is happening. Oh my God, this is my life. Oh my God. And I was crying all the time, not because I was sad or not because I was depressed, but I was crying just as heavy as those times when I was depressed or when I was scared or sad. But it was from a space of gratitude, like, damn, you thought that I deserve this? Like, this is mine? This is my life, universe. You're giving this to me? I can have this? These are the people I get to talk to? This is what my life gets to look like. This is how I get to feel. Are you serious? I get that. And it's overwhelming. And that's what your life should look like. That's what your life will be like. When the tears come from a space of unconditional love and like me, I'm, I get to be this blessed. Everybody should have that. Everybody does get that. But only when you respect what's going on. 
All right, so I obviously have 57 seconds, 55 seconds, 54, 53, 52 left in this Astro Live chat. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've been putting a lot of my energy into my YouTube channel and into the Sacred Circle Tarot School, so make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, um, which is Bahati Life. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram. Obviously, you already are. Make sure that you're following me on Twitter, because if you're following me on Twitter, you know I've been kind of like lighting that up. Just random conversations, like last night I was tweeting from a drag show. Uh, which is really cool, even though I was so moody, but I was tweeting from a drag show. It was a lot of fun, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and what else do I want to talk to you guys? Which is pretty much just like, thank you so much, and I love you guys. And this will go up on the YouTube channel, because I feel like those of you guys need to see it and revisit it, and it is what it is. And this week's Astro Forecast is up there as well. In the meantime, 